Thank you, James. Uh, did you hear what he said there right at the end? Over four million cores in Ironic? That's pretty incredible. Uh, I think that it's awesome when we have uh, the opportunity within our community to see all of these different perspectives. Amy, who's helped build ecosystems around open source. James, who is uh, one of the largest consumers uh, of open source, running some of the largest infrastructure. And next up, we're gonna get to hear from some of the developers who are, who are building it. And so James talked to, you know, four million plus cores. That's obviously something that's gonna be a fairly stable uh, code base that you're gonna rely on for that. But Ironic is also one of the projects that's getting pushed into new areas like HPC and machine learning and supporting containers. And so up next, we're gonna see how you can take uh, bare metal and take it into some of those really cool new environments. So help me welcome Chris Hodge and Julia Krieger. All right, demo time. <laughs> so, um, like I was saying, you're gonna show us one of the, uh, the cool use cases that, that's kind of cutting edge. This is stuff that's very new, very, you know, very much still being developed, um, but that involves Ironic as one of the underlying components. Yeah, this is actually, this demo is gonna show how Ironic is being used in a new way to manage hardware, like the machines we have in front of us right here, um, to, uh, you know, using Kubernetes. And what we're doing is we're going to create a new custom resource inside of Kubernetes called Bare Metal Host, which is going to be backed by Ironic. And so we're just going to start with a fresh, brand new Kubernetes installation, nothing there. Um, and as you're watching, at the top of the screen, you're gonna see the status of our system, so you can follow along with that. To the left of the screen, you're gonna see the manifests that we use to define what our bare metal resources look, right, look like. And then to the right, you're going to see the commands we, we run to kind of bring the whole system to life. All right, let's get it started. Yeah. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start out. We're just gonna watch all of the resources in the system. And so we're using cube control to watch our bare metal hosts and OpenStack bare metal node list to kind of watch uh, Ironic's view of the system. And so we start that up. Um, so one of the things you're gonna notice is that there's actually, um, there's, there's nothing happening right now. We're seeing errors up at the top there, and that's because we have literally installed nothing except for Kubernetes. And so we're gonna start off by running a local installation of Ironic. and we bring up the Ironic service, and we're going to see that um, Ironic is connected, and, we, and then we can... Some of the errors went away. Yep, some of the errors went away, but we okay. still don't have this resource type, bare metal hosts. And so we're going to use this new project called Metal Cubed to create these bare metal hosts and make Kubernetes aware of, uh, that we can manage these resources. And so as we run this, we're going to see that we go from we don't know about this resource to we have no resources found. And that's because uh, these servers, your little mini data center here, <laughs> they actually are not registered, they don't have anything installed on them, they're just bare machines. Right, these servers haven't been enro enrolled yet. And okay. so we have to tell Kubernetes and Ironic about this. And the way we do this is with a manifest. It's a YAML file that we have on the left, left here where we define our three nodes, which have a state, are they online, we give them a name, and we also talk about how we, the, uh, the hardware interfaces that we have to turn them on and off and provision them. And so we have three of these nodes defined in this file, and we use cube control um, and apply this file, which we call hostsenroll.yaml. And when we run that, our nodes are created, the credentials to um, communicate with them are created, and almost immediately we see this reflected in the resources in the system. So Kubernetes says that we know about these resources, they're ready to be provisioned, and Ironic says, yep, we know about this and they're ready to be managed. Um, so now, uh, we can update our host's file, our, our host manifest, to add a little bit more information to the system. And so for node one and node two, we're going to bring them, we're gonna bring them online and we're also gonna define different images that we want to provision them with. So on node one, we're going to install a basic Linux image, and on node three, we're going to install a Kubernetes image. So we go back to our command window, we apply it to 
our new hosts up manifest, and we launch it. And again, all of the resources change. They, they change from state ready to provisioning. And Ironic begins the deployment process. Now, if you've ever worked with bare metal before, you know that it can take a little bit of, a little bit of time to clean the systems, boot them, get everything set up. And so while we do that, I think that uh, Jonathan might have an exciting announcement for us. Sure. So um, one of the things that, uh, that we have seen growing as a, as a use case within OpenStack overall is bare metal. Uh, it's gone from single digits to uh, mid-double digits in terms of production usage within our user survey over the last couple of years. And we see it driving some of the newest use cases from our, our user base. So what we are doing uh, this week is we are launching a new program around Ironic to bring together uh, the vendors who are creating products that, that integrate it, as well as the users like James and others who are uh, basing their, their fundamental data center components around it. And uh, as we started to put this together, we had a really strong response. We have over 30 companies that have already joined up to, uh, to participate. Um, so that's a lot of momentum in this. And I think that what, what uh, these companies want to do is they, they want to get together and find a path forward um, to, to share uh, how they're doing it, their use cases, and also to help direct the future of development around Ironic and bare metal overall. Um, so if you want to get involved in that, uh, you can go to openstack.org slash bare metal to, to see more information and start working with, uh, with uh, this, this new um, part of our community that's forming up. We also have PTL of Ironic here today. And, uh, and, and Julia has, has spent years and years working on Ironic and bare metal overall. And I'm going to hand it over to her to talk a little bit about um, why she thinks bare metal is very important. Thank you. So if we look at the history of computing, we started out programming our computers with the design of electrical mechanical circuitry in the, I won't even call it a box, racks. <laughs> As time went on, we developed new ways of programming them. We developed operating systems to make things generic, to make it even easier to program them. We even started virtualizing them, virtualizing entire systems. The point really is, though, that every concept in the history of computing is an abstraction of a concept that supports it. You know, we've put forth a tremendous amount of energy into making computing easier. Um, you know, we're trying to take away the difficulties of how we orchestrate all our systems, how we construct and manage our networks, how we deploy the operating systems, and how we manage the servers. Um, you know, but one fundamental thing at the bottom of this is that the underlying hardware still has to be provisioned and it still has to be maintained. And if you think about computers and cars, they're very similar. They, cars need to be built, just like computers. They need to, their tires rotated, unfortunately not computers, but so you need oil, your oil change in your, in your car, and you also occasionally need things inspected, make sure that they're in proper working order. And, and, and cars sharing the same interfaces and everyone being able to you know, drive them the same way doesn't take away that you know, we, have to, we have to manage this, you know, this underlying technology beneath it. And you know, that brings such a key point home that you know, the success of the technology at the top of the stack really relies upon the solid foundations that we lay at the bottom of the stack. Which brings us to Ironic. Ironic is an open stack project that helps solve the problem of managing provision bare metal systems. It started as a driver for Nova as a way to make bare metal machines look like virtual machines. You get a fully managed, multi-tenant, bare metal cloud with the same APIs that you use to deploy a virtual machine. Yeah, and, you know, and over the years, Ironic has matured into more than just a, a simple compute driver, which is why it's one of my favorite OpenStack projects. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful standalone service for managing and provisioning bare metal. You know, and it has this rich feature set that includes support for a wide number of industry power management and provisioning, st provisioning standards and drivers. Um, it allows for hardware inspection and discovery. It has mechanisms for firmware updates. Um, and it also has a framework for, for lifecycle management. Um, you know, one of the best things about it is it has a small installation footprint, which makes it a useful driver and a useful um, integration layer for other management tools, like the one we're seeing, um, you know, we're demonstrating today with uh, Metal Cubed. 
coming back to abstractions, one theme that we probably all know is that as you add more abstractions, you start to lose performance. It's the interpreted versus compiled languages, virtual machines versus bare metal kind of differences. Yet the rise of cutting edge technologies on top of these abstractions is creating a demand for highly performant and flexible tooling. In our demo, we're showing you how Ironic can help deliver performance in this new reality. So let's see how the, did it work, Chris? Yeah, so if we, if, we, if we go back to the demo, we can see that both of the nodes that we have have moved from you know, a manageable state to an active state. Um, Ironic says they're active and powered on, and Kubernetes says that they're provisioned and ready to go. So you know, in the time that we started the demo, just, you know, just a few minutes ago, we went from Kubernetes installation all the way to managing a little, uh, our own mini data center. And so you installed Ironic. Mm -hmm. You uh, brought these machines up, enrolled them, and you did all of that through Kubernetes APIs yeah. as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, that is such an awesome example of, I think, uh, what we were talking about earlier, of collaborating across boundaries, of bringing projects and communities together to, uh, to bring that power that, that, that people are looking for. So thank you for, uh, for showing us that today. Um, if people want to, uh, to learn more about it this week, what, what should they be doing? Today we have several sessions that people might find interesting. And if you want to see this live demo with Chris, he'll be in the Open Infrastructure Lounge. In the, the Open Infrastructure Lounge. Uh, you, can, you can find it on the schedule, and I'm happy to provide demos of this or of uh, um, Ironic with Nova. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Well, well thank you for, for showing us that uh, today, and, uh, and I'm glad that the, uh, the, the demo god smiled on us. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So, you know, I talked some about my personal experiences, and we heard from Amy, we heard from James, we heard from Julia and Chris, and, uh, and I think that, that, that we talked about what we've learned and what we've seen and the opportunities that are ahead of us. And some of my most important experiences have happened in this community, and many of those things that I've learned and that I think, you know, all of us have learned, we've learned from you, and we've learned from participating with all of you as we have built OpenStack and uh, all of these open source tools over the last few years. You know, learning and solving problems together is what we do, and collaboration without boundaries is how we do it. And I want that to be a theme for all of us as we get ready to, uh, to spend our week together working to try to solve problems, to try to create new innovation, and to try to drive the state of the art forward, enabling um, 5G and machine learning and AI and all of these incredible new use cases. We have an awesome opportunity to make sure that as we go out into the future, more and more of it is built on open source and open infrastructure. So let's go do that this week. Have a great week, everyone, and thank you for being here. <laughs>